Do you have a roll call, please? Mayor T. Walt. Here. Vice Mayor Seelock. Here. Councilman Cockrell. Here, thank you. Councilman Gillespie. Here, thank you. Councilman Holloway. Here. Councilman Meza. Here. Councilman Thompson. Here. Thank you. Next item tonight is item number four, approval of the minutes. Regular council meeting minutes of July the 13th, 2020. Work session minutes for July the 6th, 2020. Do I hear a motion? Mr. Mayor, I, I move to approve the regular council meeting minutes of July 13th, 2020 and the work session minutes of July 6, 2020 as presented. Here a second. Second. Motion is second. Is there any discussion? Roll call, please. Vice Mayor Seelock? Yes. Councilman Cockrell? Yes. Councilman Gillespie? Yes. Councilman Holloway? Yes. Councilman Meza? Yes. And Councilman Thompson? Yes. Next item tonight is receipt and petitions or correspondence from the public. Uh, we have three tonight. The first one's Tim Radigan. Tim Radigan, 6079 Stonewall, Jackson Highway, Front Royal, Virginia. Given the current situation that is going across our nation right now with um, a couple of organizations out there that are now calling for the defunding and the dismantling of our police departments, I wanted to give the citizens of Front Royal and Warren County an opportunity to express their support to, for our law enforcement departments if they choose to. That's, that's why I had these signs made up. Um, they are front and back, um, the Front Royal Police Department on one side and the Warren County Sheriff Department or office on the other side. And I wanted an opportunity to give each member of the town council one of these signs as well. It is very important that the citizens of Front Royal and Warren County know that the municipality governing bodies are firmly behind their law enforcement officers and their law enforcement departments. We have seen many large cities decided that it would be a good idea to cave to the demands of a radical few. They happen to be the loudest, therefore if they're the loudest, they are right, okay? And they have chosen to back away from supporting their law enforcement officers through various ways, such as cuts in their budgets and that sort of thing. I'm also beginning a plan for a a long-range plan to plan an event would like to hold some type of rally. Whether that rally would mirror something that Front Royal Unite did, such as some type of um, short procession or parade, or whatever have you, of people willing to show the support of our law enforcement officers. At the conclusion of that particular rally, we would, of course, gather at some area, whether it be the gazebo or in front of the Front Royal Police Department or whatever the case may be, and we would have a few speeches, and, um, and then we would top it off with a candlelight vigil honoring all law enforcement officers across the country who have lost their lives in the performance of their duties. It is time to put the nonsense behind us. There are a few bad apples in various law enforcement officers. You don't throw the entire load of babies out with the bathwater. You root out the few bad ones, and then you go back and see how they turn bad, and then you retrain. It's simple as that. You do not throw the entire law enforcement off departments 
out with the bathwater. That is absolutely ridiculous. And I wanted to put that across, and I also wanted to say that I sincerely hope that when somebody comes up here and begins to recommend a defunding of the police department, that every one of you shout at those individuals not in front royal. I thank you for your time. Thank you, Tim. And these signs are available if y'all would like to pick one up. Next speaker, please. Paul Gabbard. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Paul Gabbert, 1221 Valley View Drive. Mr. Mayor, when the taxpayers of Front Royal are made to watch and take in the arrogance and self-fulfilling agenda from this council and interim town manager, three minutes at this podium is an insult to all who come up here to speak. I have a lot to say tonight, so please give me and others who come to the podium tonight to express their frustrations and give everyone the time they will need to do so. Mr. Gabbard, I don't want to mean to interrupt you, but I do want you to hold it to a minimum tonight, please. Three minutes? Really? No, I'll, After what I'll I just said? A few more, but I don't want a 15 or 20 minute speech. Thank you. Wow. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, from a taxpayer. And what I mean by arrogance is a letter to the governor to let the town dictate their own COVID-19 rules. Who the heck are you all to do that? A draft letter to the school board to have a normal graduation on a football field when COVID-19 is, is skyrocketing in the area. A thousand people. On, the, on, on together, on the, on, the, on the football field. And you even, you even say that it, it, to have a thousand people, you say that the graduation is a sporting event because it's held on a football field. Jeez, oh flip, that is just, it, it's, it's a Saturday Night Live skit. It, unbelievable. An interim mayor who takes office is given the green light to make sweeping changes instead of waiting a few months for the election of a new mayor. He should be held back. He should have just let it go, let the flow go, and waited for a new manager, and you all should have made sure that happened. An interim town mayor who first decision was to lower tap fees and send it back to the town's responsibility to do the work. This, he said, was to make, make it easier and less expensive for people who want to move here. Then publicly, says my wife and I moved here from Herndon, insinuating we were outsiders who should not have a say in the local politics. We all know that the lowering the tap fees was to benefit developers and home builders. These lower fees create less income to the town. Typical views. A council who hires a law firm for the EDA lawsuit. When did they hire him? After they appointed the interim town mayor. Where is this law firm located? In the same office building that one of the interim town mayors, now interim town managers, LLC is in, located in Alexandria, Virginia. Council said this is not a conflict of interest. I said it was. A council who appoints an interim town manager has no qualifications at that position. A competent town manager in Joe Walsh was, was forced out of that office. A dedicated tourism director who was well liked by the business owners, a tourism director who knew her job and did it well, fired without even talking to business owners who depend on tourists and the tourism department, put into chaos with absolutely no plan in place except to defund the department by June of this year. A town council who rejects a permanent town manager who has the qualifications, but their excuse is he is too young. He's, he's not, um, he hasn't been in the business long enough. A town council who wants all the problems they and the interim town manager have created to be worked out 
so the new town manager won't step into a quagmire of problems they have created. A council and interim town manager who act like children and break off communication with the town county EDA over items that could be worked out. All it would take is sit down and talk and get rid of all the BS. A town council and interim town manager who go to the extreme of forming an a, a town EDA only to increase town spending on salaries. When this was made public, we were told it was just an inquiry an inquiry only, and there was no intent on proceeding if consent was given from Richmond. It did not mean a town EDA would be created. That was a falsehood. You knew if consent was given, you would create one. And as usual, like every other agenda, you did this without any input from the citizens. Mr. Grabber, one more, one more minute, please. Seriously. Seriously. Okay, let me get to the let me get down here then since Mr. Seelock is shaking his head yes. Finally to the council and interim town manager. You covered up and hid a sexual harassment complaint by a town employee against a now sitting councilman. Why Mr. did Mayor? you fire this employee after her 20 years of service Order, Mr. Mayor. as a loyal lo service as loyal as she was Mr. to her Mayor. job? What will this incredibly Mayor. inept action cost the taxpayers? What are the town policies for providing a safe haven for women to come forward wow. when they are harassed verbally and assaulted physically? Wow isn't even the word. Unbelievable. Mr. Gabby. What has HR done to better train council members to prevent further harassment from continuing? Why is council refusing to respond to legal sexual harassment claims? Anything, Mr. Mr. Mayor. Thank you. You all know about it. You knew about it and you did nothing. You hit it. Have a seat. Thank you, Mr. Gabbard. Next speaker, please. Bruce Rappaport. I'll try to do this with my mask on. Uh, Bruce Rappaport, 300 West Main Street, Front Royal. Uh, as you know, interest rates in, uh, around these days are at all-time lows. And uh, I believe this would be a great opportunity for the uh, town to take this opportunity and possibly go out and fund their police station. Uh, I believe you could probably get interest rates for under 3% now, 30 years. And uh, if I recall, back in around 2017, there was a gentleman up here from Big Stone Gap. His name was Brian Phipps. And he told council that, uh, you know, the new market tax credit, it's not a done deal. In fact, it would be, I'm parsing words a little bit, but it'd be like playing a 99 to one shot at, on a horse race. It rarely comes in. But at that time, Joe Waltz and I believe B.J. Wilson were, uh, had, had the opportunity uh, to put on the table a 2.65% interest rate at 30 years, and council whiffed on it. Uh, I've heard talk about going through the Virginia Municipal League, trying to get a loan. That would take a while. Uh, you've got a debt payment coming up here on August 1. I don't know if you plan on making that debt payment, but I would. You're occupying the police station, and uh, People who occupy things tend to pay their bills. I'm talking as a town citizen, and I believe we should pay that bill. I don't think half of a payment, a one-time payment, is the right thing to do. So with that said, I, I hope that you guys give this 
real consideration because in November, there's going to be this payment's going to go up to $50,000 a month. And uh, you have the opportunity now to go out there and refinance this thing and get her done. The only other thing I have to say, what worries me about the VML is that there will be a coupon rate involved as well. You don't know what that rate's going to be. It could be 5%. And you'll have to live with that the life of the loan. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bruce. Anyone else? No, sir. Okay. We'll continue on with our agenda this evening. Next item tonight will be the reports. Uh, uh, report of Special Commission or Interim Town Manager. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Members of Council, uh, one of the most important things that I want to bring up this evening is that uh, Tina Presley is back from vacation, <laughs> which uh, I am very glad to have that, have Tina back. Um, I don't know if you saw the press release or the uh, Facebook post or even the radio ads, but um, the Town of Front Royal has opened up the portal today for the CARES Act grant. And just to remind citizens, uh, Town of Front Royal administered by the Warren County Chamber of Commerce will begin taking grant applications from town businesses for financial assistance today. Uh, the intent of the forgivable grant program is to provide immediate relief to town small businesses that can demonstrate economic hardship from the effects of COVID-19 pandemic. The grant fund shall be used to pay outstanding town of front row utility bills in order to continue to receive essential services. The remaining grant funds may be used to pay for other expenses associated with business interruption. Businesses may receive grant funding between $2,500 and $20,000, depending on their 2019 gross receipts. Um, uh, business, all they have to do is go to www.frontroyalva.com forward slash cares, and the, uh, there'll be a link at the top that they can click and start their application process. We try to make it, I believe, as simple as possible. Um, you can go on there and read the information. Um, you can also just go to our Front Royal webpage, and there's a button similar to the COVID-19 button that citizens can uh, punch that and get to the portal as well. Um, on another matter, um, Mr. Mayor, members of council, um, I really struggled with what to say tonight and whether I should or should not make these comments. Uh, I live by two, you know, I live by several personal mottos, uh, two of which are, it's never wrong to do right and always speak truth to power. The quandary I find myself in <clears throat> is on one hand, I feel a strong calling to protect town citizens who have been unfairly attacked, and on the other hand, calling out a current mayor candidate and owner of a local business and newspaper. That's a quandary I find myself in. So I'm gonna attempt to walk the line um, tonight and, and correct some information that was um, relayed to you at the last regular meeting. At the last regular meeting, uh, Mr. McCool, who's running for mayor in November, decided to come before council and make a few comments regarding his pothole of the day series that he's going to be running on, the, I think, in the Royal Examiner. And these are some quotes. I came across a couple of these holes and literally thought the whole front end was going to fall off. I think the problem lies with we're putting in water taps around town, one of the biggest areas, and some are done by town crews and some are done by contractors. And I think the issue is no one ever goes back and inspects what was done. The finishing of the road never really completed. Either it's not compacted or the asphalt is put down and in two weeks later, there's a six inch drop in the road where someone has already repaired it. Another quote, I think we need to consider having our department heads to go back and inspect what's getting done. I really wanted to address and just uh, wanted to call it to your attention and maybe put a little pressure, a friendly reminder that maybe we need to think about doing this follow-up work and making sure that we get our infrastructure in a good shape. You see, uh, members of council, uh, I was really trying to overlook these comments and frankly, just took them for you know, politicking during campaign season, so to speak. But that would not be fair to the hardworking men and women in the public works department. And let me remind you, these are the same people who work Christmas Eve and Christmas Day to fix a busted water line and do 
and do quick patch. These are the same people who get called out of hours, who work after hours, who have endured a very challenging work environment during this pandemic. What kind of leader would I be, or boss, would I be if I just let a citizen, especially one who's hoping to lead this council, come in, a, come in and paint this picture to our community that the streets are riddled with potholes and, quote, no one ever gets back and inspects what was done. The finishing of the road never really completed. So let me provide you with some data. Uh, work uh, orders placed Mr. on Teeter, the town website. Uh, we don't let people speak our public over three or four minutes, so I'd like for you to hold that down as well. Well, that's a new policy, Mr. Mayor. I was unaware of that policy. Understand Is this a new policy? But I do believe that you need to follow our same orders that we have with the general would, public. Thank you. I'm okay with, um, with Mr. Teacher continuing. Yeah. I would like to hear his comments as well. Thank you. So work orders placed on the town website for road repair. In 2019, take a guess how many orders for 2019? Four. In 2020, now granted seven months, only two. Now call-ins, people that actually call in a work order in 2019, again, four. And in 2020, three. In-house orders, now these are in-house orders that Mr. Boyer and his two supervisors actually drive around and find. In 2019, there are 13. In 2020, there's been two. Um, now I get it. I'm a type A personality. One pothole for me is too many. But a total of eight notices by citizens in 2019 and five in 2020, to me, doesn't sound like a major campaign issue. The town at the last meeting, or the mayor at the last meeting, mentioned a major hole on Stonewall Drive, and it was bad. The contractor put a tap in, and the asphalt crew uh, got delayed, and the gravel sank. Our public works department notified the contractor, and he put more gravel nearly immediately. Uh, you know, we're not, we're not the city of Baltimore or the city of Chicago. If we see or hear a problem, we get on it and we fix it. We at the staff level want as many eyes as possible looking for things to improve upon. We've really made a significant effort to focus on the little things around town and achieve excellence in everything. Another point that needs to be made is this, Mr. members Tedrick, of council. I think we've had enough. Through your I leadership. Can, can we give vote us on that? A, can we vote on that? Yeah, I'd like to see Can we vote? Yeah, you, you know, listen. He's yeah. giving us statistics, and I think that yeah. that's. I have bad. the rule, rule of this council, at least I'm supposed to have it. And if we if we're going to allow our manager to take 15 minutes, and I think we're going to have to allow our public to speak as well. And so, if you all that's what you all feel that you all want to do, then that's what I'll begin doing at our next meeting, allowing the public to speak as long as they want to speak. And so that's going to be my rule here this evening. I think that everybody knows what our town employees do, and we have already went over that, and I just don't think we need to rehash all these things. We know what our men are doing, our women, and I'm proud of those people. But I don't think we need a report for 20 minutes, Mr. Mr. Interim Town Manager. Well, Mr. Mr. Mayor, um, I've never been under any notice that we had a limit on the town manager. Well, report. we normally don't, but and, I'm and gonna, so the data I have here is data that I think is compelling data, well, correcting can, a record. Well, then why don't you give it to us in writing, and we'll. I take think I'd rather read it. read it right now, Mr. Mayor. Am I going to read this or not? I'd no. like you to finish it, Ms. Mr. Mayor. It, the integrity of our town employees have been called out on whether or not we're completing what we say we're going to be completing, and I think these statistics are well, pertinent he's to He's referred the, to the potholes about 12 or 14 times already, but you don't have to keep on, you know, talking about them. Mr. Tedrick hasn't been talking meeting, for five get minutes. Get to the meat of it and go with it. It's, yeah, it's been five minutes. So continue, but make Thank it you. shorter. Another point that needs to be made is this. Members of Council, through your leadership, the town has embarked upon a historic infrastructure program to repair the failing sewer lines. This program, program has been known for over a decade, and the can continually got kicked down the road. Violation after violation, dumping raw sewage into the river, and the can continually got kicked down the road. The town had plenty of money to fix, or at least begin to fix, the I&I problem, but former councils kicked the can. But under your leadership, we have now embarked upon a $3.6 million contract for I&I abatement. We have four different contractors working currently throughout town doing sewer, pipe, manhole rehabilitation, and service restoration and asphalt repair. After the work is complete, we have a CHA engineer inspect a job and one of two town supervisors inspect. As a last resort, before any contractors get paid, their work gets signed off on like a final punch list, if you will. But that's not enough. 
Soon we'll be embarking upon an $8 million phase with four contractors and up to 12 subcontractors. We're getting it done. You are getting it done. Least I remind you that the town was fined by DEQ because of all the can kicking of the past. But to be clear, it's going to get a little worse and before it gets a whole lot better. Members of council, in the near term, some of our roads are going to be, going to be rough, are going to get cut in order to fix various problems. I'm sure of that. But we're on it. We're doing the very best we can to reach the high standards that we've set. That I promise you. For example, Mr. Mayor, members of council, how do you like the job that was completed on steel, High View, Scott Street? Excellent workmanship, I believe. That's the kind of result the public works director and I expect. We even, I even, we even got a compliment from Mr. T. Walt on the good work up there. Another thing to mention, we had an unprecedented workload put on the streets department. We're currently four short employee, we're currently short four employees, and frankly, the high amount of COVID unemployment checks are not helping uh, fill these positions. But even with a short staff, these hardworking workers fill in for the wastewater treatment plant and the horticulture to mow. So here's the bottom line as far as I'm concerned. I just can't, I can't allow, and I'm not going to allow any candidate for any office to step on the backs of our hardworking employees just to try to make some political hay. It's not going to happen under my watch, plain and simple. No one is harder on our department heads than, than me. I've proven that I'm not afraid of making the tough decisions to uh, better our town. If our employees do a great job, I pat them on the back or provide a certificate of excellence. If they don't do a good job, I qu quickly let them know what we expect and how to get it done. If there's poor workmanship in our town under my watch, it's on me and me alone. I take full responsibility and address the matter privately with my team. To all, to all of you and the citizens, if you see a problem, by all means, please contact me. My number is 540-635-8007. We are eager to improve our community for all. Hopefully I've walked the line, members of council, that ends my report. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tiedrich. Uh, next item tonight is requests or inquiries to the council. Yes, I'd like to speak just briefly about what just happened. I know that you're trying to be fair to Mr. Gabbert, who you gave five minutes to. and then No, I'm to trying to be fair to the general public, not just Mr. Gabbert, please. Okay, but um, anyways, um, I did like hearing the statistics about what we have going on in 2019 versus 2020 and how well we're doing, and I appreciate those employees because that Stonewall Drive thing got fixed right away. A lot of good things are happening, and um, I do appreciate that. Anyone else? Uh, yes. yes, Mr. Mayor. Um, I just want to um, make a comment here. Um, um, I want to thank this council. I've been here in this town my whole life, and, and, and it wasn't until this council, and I want to take my hat off to every one of y'all, that these infrastructure repairs started happening. Um, people can make hay about it, um, but just, just remember, um, who were the ones that kicked the cans down the road? And that's all I got to say, thank you. Anyone else? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Can you hear me? Sure. All right, I was just, I was just checking. Um, because, uh, frankly, I, I'm disappointed, and I just want to say this respectfully. Your council members, I'm sorry, did you have something to say as well? Okay. These council members asked for a point of order on Robert's rules, to which you ignored when multiple council members said point of order. Robert's rules on attacking individual council members or town staff, but you didn't intervene despite multiple petitions for you to intervene. Instead, you allowed it to continue and you even extended the time that's, that's mutually agreed upon with this council, which is within your right, to Mr. Gabbert, who took a pot shot and then left. Mr. Tiedrich was given some constructive statistics for the community that is very interested in understanding and hearing what Mr. McCool presented uh, a few weeks back and you took an unprecedented approach to cut him off which has never happened before. I don't understand why. I, I don't understand why, why you're maneuvering politically that way. That's never been done before. 
that's highly disappointing to me. And it's funny, uh, Mr. Gabbert um, mentioned in a derogatory manner many of the things that this council has done in the last year. And it's, it's funny to me because I see them as accomplishments. I see a lot of what he mentioned as accomplishments. And then the rest of it, speculation, uh, I can't tell out of malice or disappointment or uh, you know, half-baked knowledge about what's happened on this council, but certainly he hasn't been at the meetings or hasn't been participating in the council meetings where we've discussed a lot of what he's, what he's, um, what he's brought up tonight. I would have been happy to address him. Uh, instead, drop a bomb and then walk out so that we can't address any of the, any of the things that uh, he brought up. So disappointed, Mr. Mayor, um, that you didn't defend your council. Disappointed that you didn't defend your employees by calling point of order. Um, and it makes me lose trust that we're actually able to navigate this as a council when our mayor won't stand up for us. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Yep. What Jake just said, none of it surprises me. And I'm sure none of it surprises anybody else here on this council about your conduct tonight. Anyone else? I guess it's my turn to speak, isn't it? You know, I have no problem with anybody coming in here and speaking, but I do believe that we're, we, we take advantage of these things, some of us. And I think that was happening this evening. Don't get me wrong. I'm, I think we have a good staff, and I'm not trying to pull down the staff at all. I have no problem with Mr. Tiedrich. Uh, I just do believe his report was quite lengthy, and I do believe that uh, he could have been a little less shorter, but... I think it was done in a purpose to try to downgrade the man that's running for the mayor ship, and I don't appreciate that. Uh, you could have said that last week, you said the same thing at the last meeting. You could have short shortened that very simply tonight saying that the things had been prepared, uh, repaired and that should have been the limits to it. So, you know, I don't want to get in a discussion with these things with the town council or the mayor, or, or not the mayor, but the town manager. Look. Uh, we got a job to do, and we need to work together, and that's what we're not doing right now. It's everybody against me, apparently, uh, in anything I say anymore, and I don't understand it. I mean, I've, I've tried to do a good job here, and I've done a pretty good job, as Mr. Tedrick referred to. I've tried to get some infrastructure completed, and I'm hoping we can. If the virus wouldn't have not have hit, I think we would be paving streets and doing a lot of other things. But, you know... I'm being criticized for what trying to run a meeting the best I can, but you know what's good for the republic should be good for the rest of us. You know, if we're going to uh, limit the people in the audience to speak three, four minutes, then I think we need to adhere to those things too. If it's something of that magnitude that you want to tell us about, send us an email, send us a hard copy. That's all we need to know. The public doesn't care uh, those things. What was done. You know, and, 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 and I, you know, I kind of get kind of upset about this cancel. Everything I try to do, you all take offense to. You know, and I don't understand that. Uh, you know, I've been here for a long time, and I don't think I know any more than anybody else, but I, I would like to have the respect as a mayor. And I'm not getting that from any of my councilmen, except maybe one person on this council. And that bothers me. And I hope the general public sees that out on these videos that we publish every week because I am being re reprimanded, re ridiculed, and everything. I've been reprimanded by this council before on something I tried to do that was good for the town council. We wouldn't be in this predicament if they would have listened. But now we're in a predicament of trying to pay off an $8.4 million loan from the police department and things of that nature. And if they listened to me, we wouldn't have that problem. We could have had it resolved many, many months ago. But no, nobody would listen. We thought we had to go to court. And that's where we're at at this point, spending a whole lot of money of taxpayers' money in order to cover something that we all know we're not going to get anything out of. So that's my, that's my speech tonight. And I'm really sorry I had to say anything. Because, but as a mayor, I need respect from this council, and I'm not getting it. Nor am I thank from you, Mr. Tedrick, as well tonight. And, and I'm, I'm kind of sorry about that, really. But I guess I'll have to live with that until the next, next election. And if I get uh, elected to the town council, I'll do my best to do the same thing I've did in the last 15 years. So with that, I'm going to close this evening.
Next item tonight is item D, proposals for additions or deletions or additions to the agenda. Hearing none, we'll continue on to the consent agenda. The consent agenda tonight is two things, a bid for milling and the epoxy of application of the Stonewall Drive Bridge. Second thing is the bid for chemicals and water, wastewater treatment plan. To hear a motion. Do I hear a motion? Mr. Mayor, I move the council to approve the consent agenda items as presented. Do I have a second? Second. Does anybody want to pull anything off the consent agenda? If not, roll call, please. Vice Mayor Seelock? Yes. Councilman Cockrell? Yes. Councilman Gillespie? Yes. Councilman Holloway? Yes. Councilman Meza? Yes. Councilman Thompson? Yes. Motion carried. Next item tonight is uh, council approval. Request to place love letters on the town right away by Freeba. Uh, read the summary, please, on that one, will you? Freeba, who's been working on a love letters project over the past year to create a positive message to enrich and uplift our community with a positive focus, which will additionally aid in our community's tourism efforts, has requested that the Front Royal Town Council authorize an encroachment of Freeba's mobile love letters sign the, upon and over the grassy area of the town's real property and public right-of-way located at the southern corner of the intersection of East Main Street and South Commerce Avenue. The area within said town property containing 1,500 square feet, more or less. When said sign is not on display in other areas and when said property is not in use for other purposes by the town and the sign would be incompatible with the town's other uses. One requirement of Virginia Love Works program is to have a permanent spot to display the love letters. When our portable set is not loaned out, it must be visible to passerby and also must have a safe area near parking so the public can get out and take photos with the letters. The grassy area at the corner of East Main Street and Commerce Avenue meets these requirements. Freeba has already obtained a temporary sign permit from the town manager's office. The Code of Virginia, Virginia Code 15.2-1800, require the sale or lease of public land in Virginia to require a public hearing following advertisement in a local newspaper. Article 7, Section 9 of the Virginia Constitution allows leases of public land for a period not in excess of five years to not require a public bidding. There are motions. Mr. Mayor, I move the council approve the permanent placement of the love letters at the town-owned 1,500-square-foot corner of Main Street and Commerce Avenue, contingent upon a signed agreement with Freebra. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Yes, Mr. Mayor. I just wanted to mention that um, under the staff recommendation, it says um, that it appears that the love letter signs are a benefit to the town and county and no cost to either government. And I just thought we should probably clarify that um, on April 13th, this council approved $4,000 towards the purchase of those love letters. Um, and I think there was some discussion at that time that we might get uh, some grant money back on that. And I think we had to approve it, right, Tell Natasha? Yeah. We had to approve it before we could get any money back. So I just wanted to mention that, so we have had some expense in it. And would you all agree that we did have some expense in it? So I'm not, I'm not against it. I just wanted to make sure that the public recognized that. And then um, also the lease. Um, so if at any time the town um, needs to use that property, um, the, the letters would need to be moved. And last but not least, there is a part in the lease agreement where it talks about maintenance. Um, and so in case any in the citizens were wondering, so they would be responsible for mowing that property. Is that correct, Mr. Napier? Okay, that, that's all I had to offer. Anyone else? Ms. Cockrell, sir, Mr. Mayor, mm -hmm. as it relates to that, Ms. Cockrell, if you'd like, we can, um, the additional cost, so there's no additional cost. I think what the intent there was, was that there's no cost for this right-of-way placement. Right. So, but I appreciate the clarification. Yeah, you are just, correct in the record. I just wanted to make sure that the public didn't question why it said that. So. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Is there anyone else? 
Can I have a roll call, please? Vice Mayor Seelock? Yes. Councilman Cockrell? Yes. Councilman Gillespie? Yes. Councilman Holloway? Yes. Councilman Meza? Yep. Councilman Thompson? Yes. Motion carried. Next item of the night is item number nine, FY21 budget amendment for donation of scholarship money. Uh, could you read the summary, please? A donor who prefers to be known as Frank would like to donate $2,000 to the town to be used toward town scholarships. A donor, the Front Royal Warren County anti litter Council, would like to donate $1,140 to be used toward the purchase of a water bottle filler fountain located at Town Hall. Council's requested to approve a budget amendment in the amount of 2000 to the FY21 budget to accept the funds and to be used towards scholarships. Council's also requested to approve a budget amendment in the amount of $1,140 to the FY21 budget to accept the funds to be used toward town <clears throat> scholarships and a water bottle filler fountain. <laughs> <laughs> Dear motion, please. Yes. I move that council approve a budget amendment in the amount of $2,000 to the FY 2021 budget to accept the funds to be used toward town scholarships. I further move that council approve a budget amendment in the amount of $1,140 to the FY 2021 budget to accept the funds to be used toward the purchase of a water bottle filler fountain for town hall. Second. A motion and a second. Any discussion? Yes, Mr. Mayor, I just want to say that um, those are generous donations and thank you uh, to the individuals and groups that made those donations. Um, the scholarships go a long way in our community and that's just, it's heartwarming um, to, to see that somebody is willing to, to help fund that so that we can continue that program as well. Um, and, and again, even the generous donation of um, the water fountain, I think it's such a great idea. It's nice to see those starting to pop, out, pop up uh, around our communities um, and people carrying a water bottle instead of disposables um, all the time. So again, generous donations and, and thank you to those individuals and groups that, that made that contribution towards our town. Anyone else? Yes, yes I'd Mr. also like to, I'm sorry, go ahead, Gary. Oh, yes, Mr. Mayor, I just, uh, again, I wanna say thank you to the generous gifts uh, that were provided. Um, the, the scholarships goes a long way um, into helping young individuals and graduates here in our community. And the uh, thanks for the bottle filler. It's going to be greatly used and greatly appreciated. Thank you so much. I just wanted to say thank you to the donors, donors as well. Anyone else? Um, just ditto, as if I can say enough. You all said it well enough. I thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mayor. Just to clarify one point, uh, uh, this. The $2,000 contribution for the school scholarships is in addition to what the town sets aside. So Good. at some future point, um, hopefully the money get moved from the contingency into the operating budget. Once again, um, we'll have $3,000 to award for scholarships and you can decide to disperse it how you wish. Very, very generous. Thank you. If there's no other discussion, can I have a roll call, please? Vice, <clears throat> Vice Mayor Seelock? Yes. Councilman Cockrell? Yes. Councilman Gillespie? Yes. Councilman Holloway? Yes. Councilman Meza? Yes. Councilman Thompson? Yes. Motion carried. That concludes our regular agenda this evening. The next item is item 10, the personnel and <clears throat> consultant for the legal counsel regarding pending litigation. We need to go into public hearing to hear a motion. Sure. I move that town council go into closed meeting to discuss and consider the assignment, appointment, promotion, performance, and salaries of specific public officers, appointees, or employees of the town pursuant to section 2.2-3711.a.1 of the Code of Virginia, and two, consultation with legal counsel and briefings by staff members or consultants pertaining to actual or probable litigation with EDA, where such consultation or briefing and open meeting would adversely affect the negotiating or litigating posture of town council probable litigation, meaning litigation that has been specifically threatened or on which the public body or its legal counsel has a reasonable basis to believe will be commenced by or against a known party pursuant to section 2.2-3711.a.7 of the Code of Virginia. Second. A motion and a second. Could I have a roll call, please? Vice Mayor Seelock? Yes. Councilman Cockrell? Yes. 
Councilman Gillespie. Yes. Councilman Holloway. Yes. Councilman Meza. Yes. Councilman Thompson. Yes. Uh, that concludes our agenda tonight. We will not be meeting after the meeting, so it's no sense for anybody to stay because there will be no, nothing said after the meeting. Thank you for coming.